928 for a canopy remover. Domino 3 to maintenance control. I need an address team on aircraft FG 928 to remove and replace the canopy remover. Due time change. Well, I'm not sure what I can do, but I'll give it a try. Egress Systems Unit, Sergeant Martin. Yeah? Well, according to my records, we've still got a couple days to spare in that time change. But if it's important that you catch it tonight. Well, you see, both my teams have worked overtime every night this week. Perry and Carter just checked in this very second, and, and Cooper and Reynolds aren't even back yet from that canopy remover time change on 961. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Right. First thing tomorrow. You bet. Much obliged. Like, thanks a million, Chief. And Cooper thinks I stay up night plotting overtime for you guys. Boy, if that ogre dishes out any overtime tonight, I'm resigning from the Air Force. What's so special about tonight, Coop? <laughs> Pull your head out of that gopher hole and I'll show you what's so special. Wow. Coop, where'd you find that? That chum is a military secret. Hey, is that canopy initiated all set? Roger. Well, as soon as I hook up this hose to the firing pin release, I'm done. Hey, suppose you tell the crew chief to start checking over the 211, huh? Right. I'll be with you, gorgeous, just with two turns of a wrench. Uh, Chief, here's a 211 on this. Here you go. See you. Yeah, Lucky. Hi. Hi. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Six one George Tower. Winds are one six zero at six knots. Cleared for takeoff. Eject? I don't think so. Oh, maybe, uh, maybe he didn't have time. Maybe he didn't, Cooper.
I'm Colonel Putnam, president of the investigating board. Now, just make sure no one gets in our way. Keep all spectators back. And if anyone wants access, have them see either me or Captain Rivers, the investigating officer. Yes, sir. satisfied as to the cause of death, Doctor? Well, it's about as close an evaluation as we can make out here. Okay, boys. Hey, hold it. I want to stick around and see what gives. Hey, wait a minute, fellas. Thank you. Apparently, he experienced engine failure immediately after takeoff. Reacted quickly, informed Tower of his intention to eject, and made every effort to do so. You're not just whistling Dixie. Any clue yet as to the cause of engine failure? It's a little early, Colonel, but I think there's enough left to sift out. Get a jet engine specialist over here and have him go over that engine completely. Yes, sir. Sure, sure. Find out what happened to the engine. But why didn't the canopy come off? And you better get a CAD technician over here and have him figure out the whole story on the egress system failure. At a boy. Somebody say something? No, sir. Yes, sir. Me, sir. Charles Albright, Ghost First Class. And I intend finding out who promoted me to this rank. the infant? He's a new guy. The chief has to have somebody warming up in the bullpen. Hey, what's what's with you, Coop? What do you think's with me? Look, nobody said it was anybody's fault. Accidents happen, they're inevitable. Are they? Why, you goof off someplace on the job? I don't know. I just keep wondering if I could have. Ah, uh, go on, Coop. You know your job. Yeah, I know my job. But did I do it? Yeah, accidents like the one yesterday make you sit up and take notice. Man, it is so easy to get careless. And there are so many items that can be involved. But usually, that's some sort of personnel failure whenever an accident occurs. You take these pins, for example. Yes, Sergeant. These jokers are a few things that actually came out of an aircraft. This is a homemade, unauthorized safety pin. This one was attached to the streamer by a paper clip. This one was just poked through a hole in the streamer. And this hunk of string was supposed to secure this one. Now, when a pilot or crew member before takeoff pulls the streamer, he doesn't realize that the improperly attached pin doesn't come with it. And in an emergency, when he tries to eject, well, you see what happened. The pin would remain in place. Yes, sir. So in this outfit, we replace all worn or unauthorized, improperly attached or otherwise unserviceable pins and streamer assemblies, right? Right. And we see that the proper safety pin assembly is installed correctly. Oh, and another thing, Kelly. These things may look like something you can buy in a hardware store, but always remember they contain an explosive and deserve your respect. Egress Systems Unit, Ammon Cooper speaking. Oh, yes, sir, just a moment. Chief! Thank you, Coop. Sergeant Martin. FW961? 
Uh, just a minute, sir. Yes, sir. We did the work. Yes, sir, I always keep a complete record right here. Date and hour of request, date and hour when job begun and when it's completed. Serial numbers on any component installed. Nature of all work done and by whom? That's what I want to know. By who? Uh, whom? Yes, sir, I'll bring it over to your office myself. Oh, uh, Kelly, introduce yourself to the rest of the guys while I'm gone. Well, like he said, my name's Kelly. First name's Kevin. Hi, Bob Reynolds. Bob Reynolds. Joe Perry. Perry. Harry Carter. Hi, Harry. How are you? We've met. Oh, yeah, you're Cooper. Yeah, but you can call me Coop. Okay, Coop. Carter. So, how long and you Cooper. About a year. I'll find out which of you fixed my plane. And when I do, I'll be back. To haunt you. Hey, Sarge! Wait for me! Sure is hot, isn't it, Kel? Yeah. Wait a minute. Here's something. Over here. What are they building? My gallows. Come off it, Coop. We're all sure it'll turn out to be a part that malfunctioned. All right, so let's get hold of the initiator and the canopy remover so as we can tear them down and see what went wrong. You know we're not allowed to disassemble explosive components here, Coop. That's why they sent a CAD technician over from the Prime Armor. Well, so why doesn't he do something? He'll do his job, Coop. You better get busy with yours, okay? Uh, hey, Bob? Yeah? Come on, we ain't got all day. You know what, Coop? You're acting as though something were haunting you. Did you get a chance to examine that initiator? It was fired all right. Sure it wasn't cook off. All indications it fired normally. The initiator pin was pulled out and the primer was indented. Which tends to cast suspicion on the canopy remover or connecting hose. I wish I could have found that M1A1 firing pin release and the hose leading to it. I've got an idea that... Where do they come from? I don't know. They weren't there a second ago. We searched two days for them. What is this, some sort of a gag? I don't kid about things like this. I have the remotest idea who put them there. Hi. Uh, this where they're holding the hearing? Yes, not for a while yet. I had a few minutes to spare, so I thought I'd get some homework done. And I had other business in the building, and I didn't have time to get over to the dispensary and back. These are the pictures you took last week? No, they're on other failure to eject cases I've been working on. Do you mind? No, help yourself, Doctor. 
When the seat catapult wouldn't fire, the pilot attempted a manual bailout, but was fatally injured. Oh, why wouldn't it work? Well, so far as we could determine from the bits and pieces recovered, maintenance personnel insufficiently familiar with the egress system of that particular aircraft, inadvertently reversed two flexible hoses to the CAD items. Mm -hmm. How about this one? Well, on that one, the cable connecting the ejection control handle to the seat catapult initiator was fouled around the sheet metal cable guard. Uh, here's a bad looking one. Well, someone ignored the TO and left disconnected hoses uncovered during egress system modification. Moisture, dirt, and grease, or other foreign matter had worked their way into the sensitive mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And this one? Well, a maintenance man's failure to pay enough attention to the hose routings caused the pilot's death in that case. Several hoses disconnected at the same time and then mixed up, reconnected to the wrong items. Mm -hmm. And this? Well, we blamed rough handling for the badly bent linkage on that one. But these guys are guilty of murder. Well, more of them commit suicide. Usually by forgetting to install proper safety pins before working on or near the egress system. They can't seem to remember that they're working with explosives. The carelessness can cause their deaths or someone else's. What about the case we're on? Uh, another death due to carelessness? Well, that's up to the board to decide. Morning, Colonel. Good morning. Morning, morning Doctor. Good morning. Is the board ready to continue the investigation? Yes, sir. Yes. All right, proceed. Thank you, Sergeant. That will be all. Let's have a little recap before we call this last witness, who appears to have become the focal point of this investigation. All right, we've agreed that engine failure was due to a malfunction of the fuel control system, as detailed in Captain Rivers' report, correct? That's right, sir. And we've verified the qualifications of Captain Albright, the pilot, and we've also agreed there was probably no human or medical factors contributing to the accident or its outcome, correct? Correct, Colonel. Which brings us to his failure to effect escape and the probable primary cause of this. Right. Will you pick it up from there, Captain Rivers? On the basis of existing evidence, Captain Albright activated the canopy initiator, which fired. When the canopy failed to eject, he panicked. Well, what do you think you'd have done? Of course, most of us might have done the same thing. But that split second he appears to have used, tugging, at the canopy emergency jettison handle might have been used ejecting through the canopy. For after that, he apparently didn't have time. Now, as to the failure of the canopy remover system, I'll let Mr. K summarize his findings. Well, as stated, the M3A1 canopy initiator fired. The lab has verified that the gas pressure flowed through the high pressure hose to this M1A1 firing pin release. However, the M1A1 firing pin and release rod and piston assembly failed to retract, thereby preventing the functioning of the M1A3 canopy remover, probably because insufficient gas pressure reached it. Probable cause, a loose or incorrectly threaded hose connection to the M1A1 firing pin release, constricting the flow of or permitting a portion of the gas to escape. But the crew chief testified that he'd examined the hose and felt the connection to the firing pin release after the new canopy remover was installed. Feeling it isn't enough. You've really got to try and turn the hose to be sure. We'll never really know, sir. That fitting might have been cross-threaded, but it's so mangled we can't be sure. All right, call the boy in.
Okay, Coop. This is the time to lay it on the line. Will you please state your name, rank, service number, and organization? Donald Cooper, Airman First Class, AF 64138216, Egress Systems Unit. Have a seat. Airman Cooper, the purpose of this investigation is to determine all factors contributing to the accident and in the interest of accident prevention to preclude recurrence. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Proceed, Captain. How long have you been in the Air Force, Cooper? Approximately three years, sir. During which time you graduate from aircraft maintenance school? Yes, sir. In addition to what you learned there, have you had any further instruction in egress systems? Yes, sir. I went to a tech task school, and I took an FTD right here on the base. And of course, I get a considerable amount of on-the-job training under Sergeant Martin. And you consider yourself thoroughly familiar with egress systems? Well, not on all types of aircraft, sir. F-100s? Oh, yes, sir. F-100s and T-birds. Do you make it a practice to do your work in accordance with the applicable TO and the established SOP, or do you have a method of your own? Well, sir, I, I try to follow regulations. According to the records, you were the egress team leader of a team which installed an M1A3 canopy remover on an F100C number 541961 on the day before it was involved in the accident we're now investigating. Is that correct? Yes, sir. At what hour of the day was this work done? Well, uh, it was done, it was completed approximately at 1,600 hours. The end of your duty day? Yes, sir. According to the records, you and your teammate put in a lot of overtime that week. In your opinion, were you and your teammates suffering from fatigue at that time? No, sir. But you were anxious to get the job done? Yes, sir. Who installed the hose to the M1A1 firing pin release? You or your teammate? I did, sir. Do you think it's possible that you didn't get it on straight or tight, that you were careless? I don't think so, sir. Is it possible? Were there any distractions? Yes. I had a date. She was waiting for me outside. How did she affect your job? I don't know. I mean, I can't remember. Maybe I was looking at her instead of paying attention to what I was doing. But I thought I could feel if I was putting the coupling on straight, tight. But I'm not positive. I'll always keep wondering. Maybe, maybe I murdered him. That will be all, Cooper. Egress Systems Unit, Sergeant Martin. Well, no, sir, he's doing a 200-hour inspection on a T-Bird. Well, he seemed all right. Yes, sir. I'll tell him to take a few days off, and then I'll have him checked over before he returns to duty. Yes, sir. I'll do it myself. I guess I'm thick or something, but I still don't see the purpose in installing an initiator with no charge in it. Well, now, listen. It's the only way you can check to ensure that there is sufficient travel of the linkage or proper functioning of the initiator. Got it? Look, just as soon as I finish putting it in, I raise the right armrest to see that the dummy initiator is actuating okay. Now, if it does, I reinstall the real one. You understand? Well, I guess so. 
All right, now climb down out of there. I don't like anybody spying on me. Take it easy, Coop. You shouldn't. I sure wish you could hear me. You haven't even checked that safety pin on the seat catapult initiator. Hey, this safety pin, it's, it's an unauthorized safety pin in the seat catapult initiator. Atta boy, you're improving. But you shouldn't have that screwdriver sticking out of your pocket. Hey, Bob, Bob, give me the right pin for this, will you? Sure, but I'll have to go back to the shop. Well, I'll take your time. I have to make sure that this dummy is working. Not with the pin out, Coop. Take it easy, Coop. Okay. I'm not gonna mess around with this trigger. <laughs> trying to tell you about the screwdriver. Well, I'll never make that mistake again. <laughs> That's for a doggone sure. <laughs> <laughs> 